We're kicking off today with some news from AEW World Champion Chris Jericho, as the Inner Circle leader has teased another WWE star jumping to the opposition. In an Instagram post, Jericho posted a picture of himself with current Raw superstar EC3, saying the pair had a great chat in Orlando and said that big things were coming in the future of the former 24-7 champion, namely AEW. EC3 responded by saying, Great advice, great show, which only adds fuel to the fire that the former Impact World Champion could be leaving for AEW when the opportunity appears. Despite being a big deal in Impact and a solid star in NXT, EC3 has been a complete afterthought on Monday Night Raw, and moving to AEW could be exactly what the former Derek Bateman needs to restart his career. One person fans shouldn't expect to see in AEW anytime soon is Edge, who not only signed a new multi-year deal with WWE, but returned to the ring as part of the 2020 Men's Royal Rumble match. Though Edge's return was miraculous, many fans had issues with how WWE's production team covered it, as when Edge speared Dolph Ziggler, his first spear in almost a decade as an active superstar, the camera crew missed it, instead cutting to a shot of the crowd. After plenty of backlash from fans online, as well as Ziggler himself, the company has corrected their mistake on the WWE Network. Now, if fans go back and watch the Rated R Superstar's incredible return, you'll see the spear to the show-off, though this was just the first of what we expect to be many spears as Edge is rumored to face Randy Orton at WrestleMania 36. While Edge's return in the Rumble was already a candidate for the comeback of the decade, the return of the Rated R Superstar wasn't the only highlight of the Royal Rumble. During the Women's Royal Rumble, Santino Morella returned under his Santina character, marking his first match in WWE since his retirement in 2014 due to various injuries and surgeries. Now, the former United States Champion is looking to make a much longer return to the ring, according to the Wrestling Observer. Dave Meltzer reported this week that Santino has traveled to Colombia to undergo stem cell treatment to repair his neck and said that there are plenty of superstars who have undergone similar treatment. Edge is just one of the various superstars who have undergone stem cell treatment to repair tissue, and given that the Rated R Superstar is miraculously back in the ring, the return of Santino Marella may not be far behind. More return news now as the Women's Royal Rumble saw the return of Kelly Kelly, and according to Jerry Lawler, this may not be the last we see of the former Divas Champion. On his podcast, The King described the 30-woman match as a little bit NXT heavy, but said that every single woman from the gold brand shined during the show. Speaking about Kelly, Lawler said, I got a chance to talk to Kelly before the match for a long time. She's just doing great, and from what I understand, we may be seeing more of her. She may be coming back on a semi-regular basis. It's no secret that WWE has come a long way in their treatment of women from when Kelly was the top star, and it'd certainly be interesting to see how the former Divas champion would fit in to the women's revolution. We are looking ahead to WWE Super Showdown now as on this week's SmackDown, it was announced that Universal Champion Bray Wyatt will face Goldberg. The match will mark the WWE Hall of Famer's return to competition for the first time since SummerSlam last year, and the WWE's merchandise team have wasted no time in making a special t-shirt for the occasion. Though the front features Goldberg's iconic logo and name, the back is slightly different, as instead of asking who's next, it says Fiend's next, referencing the upcoming title match in Riyadh. It's highly unlikely that Goldberg will win the Universal title from Wyatt, especially as the WWE draws closer to WrestleMania, but hopefully the master of the jackhammer will do better than his last appearance in Riyadh, where he knocked himself out before coming up short against The Undertaker. Speaking of the dead man, The Undertaker didn't appear at all during WrestleMania 35 last year, marking only the third time since his Survivor Series 1990 debut that he didn't appear at the show of shows. This week, though, fans got a better idea of what the WWE may have planned for the Phenom, as according to Talk Sport, the dream match between The Undertaker and Sting may finally be happening. Talk Sport reported that the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion has been medically cleared to have another WWE match, and that both Sting and The Phenom are wanting the match to happen. After suffering an injury during a match against Seth Rollins at Night of Champions 2015, Sting announced his retirement at the 2016 Hall of Fame, though has teased coming out of retirement over the past few years. 
Whether the match actually happens or not remains to be seen, but if the WWE are wanting to see Sting face The Undertaker at WrestleMania, then they'd better start putting the story together on TV very soon. We're heading back to SmackDown now as this week's show saw the continuation of the Baron Corbin vs. Roman Reigns feud with The King embarrassing a fan of the big dog at ringside. During the show, Corbin poured a drink over a fan wearing a Roman Reigns t-shirt who's now been revealed as Marcus Mack, the promoter for the local all-pro wrestling promotion. Mack wasn't the only APW star to get on the wrong side of the King, as Corbin also attacked a production worker, played by APW graduate Lucian D. Light. Between the antics of Corbin as well as the return of both Goldberg and the Dirt Sheet, there were plenty of reasons for fans to tune in, and this was reflected in the ratings. According to Showbuzz Daily, this week's SmackDown drew an average of 2.54 million viewers, with the first hour getting 2.55 million, which dropped slightly to 2.53 in the second hour. This is an increase from last week's show, which brought in 2.49 million fans, although while this week's show brought in a .75 rating in the coveted 18-49 demographic, this was a slight drop from last week's 0.8. We've got some news from WWE's video game series 2K next, as despite the horrific reception to the recent 2K20 game, the developer, Visual Concepts, is here to stay. After years of Ukes helping to produce the WWE video games, the company left the fold last year, leaving Visual Concepts to create WWE 2K20 solo, resulting in a game filled with glitches and other issues. Hopefully WWE 2K21 will be an improvement on last year's release, and though 2K20 has improved thanks to a series of patches, the game remains a commercial failure compared to previous entries in the wrestling video game genre. Now, WWE recently gave their 2019 fourth quarter earnings report, and one of the most interesting things discussed is the idea that Vince McMahon is considering selling the rights to some WWE content. This would of course mean that certain shows would be moved off the WWE Network, and there are already a few distributors who have shown interest in acquiring WWE content. According to the sporting news Jeff Muehlhausen, Amazon and their CEO Jeff Bezos have expressed interest in purchasing the streaming rights for what he described as major pay-per-view events, presumably the big four shows of the year. Given the success of Amazon Prime, it makes sense that McMahon and Bezos could do a deal, as with an estimated net worth of $86 billion, Bezos certainly has the cash to afford to work with the chairman. We're taking a break from WWE now, as former NXT Cruiserweight Champion Leo Rush has been given the green light to compete in a non-WWE atmosphere. The self-professed Man of the Hour will be competing in the annual WXW 16 Carat Tournament, which will take place on March 6th and will see Rush travel to Germany for the show. While there was a time when it seemed like Rush's career in WWE was finished, the former cruiserweight champion is seemingly back in the company's good books, and has now been given a golden opportunity to compete overseas. From one relatively new face in the WWE to one of the biggest stars of all time, as Dwayne The Rock Johnson recently took to social media to comment on his late father. On Instagram, the Brahma Bull posted a video of the eulogy he gave at the funeral of his father Rocky Johnson, who died in January this year, aged 75. Describing his father as a trailblazer who made it in wrestling during the racial tensions of the 60s and 70s, The Rock didn't hold back in praising the soul man, saying that Rocky Johnson's name is synonymous with hard work. The Rock also revealed how he found out about what was happening to his dad, saying he had just pulled into a movie set when he got the news, but continued working, citing the mentality that the show must go on, a lesson his father taught him. As a leading man in Hollywood and a megastar of wrestling, The Rock has objectively become a bigger star than his dad, and it's humbling to see just how much soul man Rocky Johnson meant to the larger-than-life megastar. And finally, we're ending with news from the XFL, as the new football league has kicked off their first games. Playing on Saturday night, the first game of the new season saw the DC Defenders defeat the Seattle Dragons 31-19, with Cardale Jones continuing his success on the field after winning a national championship during his college days at Ohio State. Later on, the Houston Roughnecks defeated the LA Wildcats with an impressive score of 37-17, with Roughnecks quarterback P.J. Walker enjoying four touchdowns. The first games of the new season were certainly a big deal, as tickets were sold out for fans, though there were still some wrestlers who were able to make it to the games. 
On Twitter, former ECW and WWE star The Blue Meanie said that the Defenders vs. Dragons game was completely sold out, and that the line for merchandise was insanely long. Shane McMahon was also spotted on the field during the day, as the former SmackDown commissioner observed the match, which aimed to introduce the new XFL rules to football fans. Time will tell whether this new league lasts longer than the original XFL, which was cancelled after just one season in 2001, but one thing that is for certain is that Vince McMahon will stop at nothing to make it a success.